Hey, and what is going on everybody? Welcome to The Fond Dream. My name is Raymond and this is The Dream. Today we are doing a few things. First of all, is actually going to the Fed once again, sadly. Uh, coccidiosis, I, I have a feeling it's back. Nicole and I checked for it and uh, they also told us that it could come back quite easily. So we're just gonna go to the Fed first, uh, grab everything we need to help these chickens and then uh, we're gonna start the rest of the day. Now I forgot to turn on my microphone, so let me just tell you real quick. Uh, I've used some uh, Baycox, which is something you can mix into the water and that will take care of the coccidiosis. So I'm just gonna mix it in with one liter of water, put it in the coop and uh, take out the other one just to make sure that that's the only water they got. And uh, yeah, let's just hope they take it. Before we continue with the day, I just wanted to say that it has been a little bit harder than expected to raise chickens, but we're still enjoying it. Uh, we are still looking to get maybe one more or two more uh, but yeah, just a heads up if you guys are thinking about getting chickens, it is a little bit more work than you might think. Now I just wanted to quickly show you guys what we've been hanging on this trellis here. Because look at how good it has been growing. We've been uh, guiding them along, along the trellis here. And uh, in a few weeks we're hoping to have a fully built wall of flowers and green. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the first tomato. Look at that tiny bead over there. We are in the business of growing tomatoes. Now, we've got plenty, plenty of tomatoes here, but uh, yeah, none of them have really been showing any fruit so far. So really happy with that. So just a small update on the backyard while we're here anyway. Uh, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes are doing really good. There's a little butterfly. And the butterfly is the main issue of, uh, of the cauliflowers over here. You might be able to tell that it's trying to lay eggs on it and it's been doing that a lot. So. We're not too sure if we can actually get a harvest out of these uh, this year, but we do know that next year we're going to use some netting and then it will be fine. Now you can see maybe that it's also trying to attack the pointed cabbage, which has the same issue. Uh, one over here seemingly has fixed the problem a little bit, so it should be fine. But again, we need finer netting, uh, but maybe they will do just fine. So we got some beetroot over here and they are doing beautiful. We actually have some bulbs uh, being formed at the bottom there. So really happy about that. Can't wait to have more beetroot. The ones in the front yard are almost done. So just uh, can't wait for that. Now behind here, and I'm just gonna try and show you guys, there are our new peas. So it's actually some new snow peas. And uh, we're really happy that we got some new ones in there and can't wait for those to be ready as well. We still have a lot of them in the freezer from uh, last harvest. So we got plenty of time before they actually come out. Then the French beans in the back. Now, the French beans are gonna need some support, so we're gonna have to fix that today. Carrots over here, they are about ready, I must say. Uh, I don't see anything sticking out just yet, but they should be getting ready quite soon. And then we have this big, big area, which is filled with potatoes. And uh, I'm not too sure if they're doing too well. Uh, we tried to grow them in a, a shady area because there's quite a lot of shade on this side of the garden. But maybe they will do just fine. There's two species, one on the left side over here, that's the big one. And there's a few that are actually underneath there. So that's quite the issue here. In the back, some sunflowers. And that is the garden here. Now there's also over here a nice section where we have a, a small greenhouse. And we are growing, look at that, some beautiful peppers some chili peppers, so can't wait for those to turn red and actually that we can start using them. And a paprika plant. Now the Netherlands has been known for not being able to really grow these. We tried it last year and it didn't work out too well. So uh, yeah, hoping that a few of them will come out this year. And that's about the setup we've got going over here. Some extra plants that we're gonna give away, a few tomatoes, cherry tomatoes over here, but that's all stuff that we're gonna give out. All right, well, let's continue. Now while the sun is started to shine, uh, I'm just going to the front yard here and looking at my pointed cabbage, having a fuel added and it is really firm so it's ready to harvest. We're gonna snap it all the way at the bottom here, leave a few of the leaves on there and uh, then we can uh, peel them all off and have it ready for, uh, for dinner tonight. Now the main reason that I just like July so much is because we can harvest 
pointed cabbage and all the other things that we have been harvesting so far. So July usually is a place where we have to do a lot of work in the garden, but also get so many rewarding crops out of it. It's also some work that we need to do pre-planning for our fall harvest. So that's something that we're gonna do today. Let's look into that. I just had a quick lunch break and uh, it started to rain again because that's Dutch weather for you. Uh, so a few things that we need to plant because I planted them in the attic. Uh, it was too cold there, so a lot did germinate. So we're gonna put some, uh, some beans in there. That's the, the main thing that didn't germinate. And we're also gonna do some late sown um, Brussels sprouts, that's the name. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna do some Brussels sprouts. And then also I have this mix that is a flower mix for bees. So we're just gonna plant that in a pot. This pot over here. So I'm just gonna fill that up with compost, put the bee mix in there and a little bit of compost on top. And we're just gonna fill up this tray and put in the beans and the Brussels sprout. Let's go. And there we go, a tray filled with vegetables and a pot filled with flowers. I'm just gonna leave the pot outside and we're gonna put the, the tray in the attic and let it heat up over there. I might even put this in a windowsill because it's above the heating and it gives off a little bit more heat. So I'm gonna put these at a spot and then uh, we're gonna continue to the front yard because I wanna put some mulch on all my raised beds. Now there's been one thing that I've been wanting to do for a long time in the raised beds here and that's actually adding some mulch because this is on the south side, which in the Netherlands is the sunny side. Um, this is definitely a place where we need to put in some mulch. I did a little bit on that area. It's just straw, which is my favorite thing to use because it's easy, it's lightweight, it doesn't compress the soil, and it does convert into a little bit of nutrients for the soil. And when you're done with it, you can either take it out, just scoop it out really easily, put it on your compost heap, or just uh, shove it aside, put some new plants in, and put it back on there. So one thing that I also like to add is wood chips, but that's mainly for the pathways. So it's a good mulch that prevents a lot of weeds and it's also easy to walk on, a little bit softer. So it actually adds a great touch to the farm. All right, let's fill up the beds with some straw. And there you have it, all the mulch is in and it's ready to receive all the sun rays for the coming weeks. We're gonna protect our soil with this and uh, make sure it doesn't dry out as much. Next week, we're gonna harvest the broccoli. It is almost ready. And there's also a few other things we're gonna do. So stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video, leave a like, consider subscribing, and don't forget to lift the foundry. <laughs>